Tremendous glad to be here tonight. I think, I think some of y'all run some people off. And uh, we'll just say they're backslid. How about that? How about that? We can say that. <laughs> uh, hold on. Pro. I want to welcome everybody to service tonight. One of my best friends growing up is here tonight, Ronnie Foster. We're glad you're here. And all, all the trouble you all have ever heard me that I got into when I was a teenager, right there is the culprit. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We, uh, we were great friends growing up, and I consider us great friends today. And this is uh, Tammy and uh, Tammy's first cousin, so we're glad that he's here tonight. All right? I think Susan's going to lead, lead something and we're going to fellowship. Is that all right?
this one, this one says that the real quick. Um, this is an original that God wanted to paint on a piece of paper, and I know it's kind of new, but um, I just want to tell you, just listen to these words and let it minister to you. It's about when we're not good enough, God is. Uh, back in, in Exodus, when Moses was talking to God, and he felt the call to go and get the children out of uh, Egypt, he said, who am I? What good am I? He said, I'm a murderer. I can't speak well. And God said, I am. You know, Mom, it's not yes, about who you are. Yeah. It's about how God is. And that's all that this song is. And if you just feel like you're not good enough, just remember it's the God that's in you that makes you good. Yeah, that's right.
Acts chapter number 22. Serving tonight. May I remind you the Bible said in 
out of, uh, of the miracle. He, read, he, he touched them and they received their sight. The woman with the issue of blood after 12 long years crawled through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and immediately the power of God rested on her strong enough that her issue of blood was stanched forever. Hallelujah. May I remind you of that woman that had an issue that her daughter was vexed with the devil and Jesus just simply spoke the word. May I remind you of that centurion soldier that said, Master, my servant lay at the point at the house and I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, but if you just speak the word.
up on over the issue of blood. How about those ten lepers that he touched? He can think about all that, but now he's got to enter into what God's really called him to do. Help me right now. I could use you see what I'm seeing. See, he didn't come here just to heal the sick. He didn't come just to open up blinded eyes. He did not come here just to raise the dead. The Bible said he came to destroy the works of darkness and to defeat the enemy of our soul once and for all. And in order for him to do it, he couldn't do it through the miracles. He couldn't do it through the blessing. He had Isn't it weird how one service we can be shouting praise in God? 
God and Monday morning comes and here comes the garden. They enter in. I'm going to preach it with y'all. I can not. They push the gate open. Jesus does and walks into that garden with eleven. He's already lost one. And now eight of them, he leaves at the gate. You stay at the gate. You know what the gate says? You ain't all the way in, but you ain't all the way out. You are lukewarm. See, I can always tell the ones that's lukewarm. They won't be around when the garden experience happens. Come on now. He leaves them at the gate, and here's what the Bible says. He takes Peter, James, and John, his inner circle, on into the garden, into the depths of that garden. And they can't even go as deep as he's about to go. But he takes them as, as far as he can, and he says, stay here. I'm going to pray. Well, they did not know that the next hour, it would be the darkest hour of Jesus' life. It didn't happen when he got on the cross. It happened before he got to the cross. The cross was his destiny. Yes. Come on. Your darkest hour will always come right before your destiny. Yes. Yes. You didn't hear me. Everything God's called you to be, I'm preaching to myself right now, will come right after a time of misunderstanding, a time of hurt heart, a time of hurt feelings, a time Stay here. Just stay here. You can't know where I'm going. Come here, Michael. Run to me. Run to me. Come here, Brother Terry. Run to me. Come here, Brother Tommy. Run to me. Come on, man. Bless him, Jesus. Bless him, God. You. You three men are good men. Come here. You're good men. Bless him, Jesus. But you can't know where I'm going. You're going to have to understand Bad as it hurts me to say this, there are some people that can't go where God's calling you. What God has designed for your life is loneliness. <coughs> you ain't going to be. Every great person that ever done anything in the kingdom of God went through times of loneliness. Elijah in the cave. Help me right now. Elisha becomes an angry old man before he dies and left alone unfulfilled in ministry till after his death. Right. Moses is on the back side of the desert for 40 years, Michael Bell, before he hears the voice of God. All alone. <coughs> with nothing more than a dumb few sheep that he's pushing about. 40 years of loneliness. I'm preaching to somebody tonight. You can't go with me. As good of a man you are, Terry said, but you can't go with me, he would say to Peter. Oh, James, you're not allowed to go. So stay here. Just pray a while. You need to pray. You need to pray. This is my destiny. It's not yours. Your destiny is coming later. In fact, Jesus said, the cup that I'm going to drink of, you can't drink of it. You're unworthy to drink of what I'm about to go through. You won't make it through what I'm about to go through. And the Bible said that Jesus left Peter, James, and John at the, at the foot of a tree. Just leaned up against that tree and you all pray. Have a prayer meeting. Huh? I'm going on. But while you're praying, be watching. Isn't that what he told the church to be doing? Watch and pray that you enter it not into temptation. I'm going about a stone's cast from you as far as you can throw a rock. Bless him, God. You didn't hear what I said. I said, I'm a rock's throw from you. I'm not only the rock, I'm the rock throw from you. He ends up, I, I, I'm leaving you. And I want to, you're going to sense a little bit of loneliness, so you'll have the three of you. What do you do? When you don't have three. What do you do when you don't have anybody? And nobody understands. And you've lived a life where the anointing has rested on you. And now 
You're all alone. Come on. Thank you, Brother David. I think I will. <laughs> he presses on into the garden. A stone's cast away for those disciples, and he enters in to a time with his father. Unlike any other time, and let me just say this, he enters into a time with Satan. Unlike any other time. The darkest time of his life happens in that garden of the Bible. Jesus said, this is the hour and the power of darkness is upon me. Standing over his body, hair clinging to his face, sweat breaks clothes on his body. Standing over him is the figure of the kingdom of darkness. It is not an imp. It is not a demon sent to him. The enemy of her own soul is standing over him. Satan himself has come to war. And in his hand is a cup that nobody can drink of but his own self. What happens when the devil singles you out with your own cup of trouble. Not anybody else's. I know what I'm talking about. I've passed it for 32 years. And I've grown, I, I have tasted the cup of everybody else's trouble. Amen. Come on. There's not a day that goes by. I don't get five, six, seven, ten, fifteen sometimes phone calls a day. I'm sick. Pray for me. I'm going through this. Pray for me. So and so died. Pray for me. Pray for the family. Go to the hospital. Run here. Run there. Amen. And if you're not careful, that cup of trouble will push you further into a dark garden. Am I helping anybody you're, you, you, you're so far into the garden that you can't even reach back for help. And the help you think is there for you is asleep to the things you're going through. They don't even, they're not alert enough to even sense what you're facing. He's in the garden. He's praying. Here's Satan standing up over the top of him. I can just hear the snake crawling through that garden like it did in that first garden. Jesus is agony. He prays one time. He goes back to the disciples. Wakes them up. What are you doing to sleep? Don't you know my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto the dead? This is the type of decision that Jesus would face. Yes, that's right. I submit to the will of my Father and go to that cross or I submit to my own fleshly will. And I, and, and I say no to that cup. Yes, he goes back. They're asleep. He goes and prays the second time. Oh, God, I, I, am I really alone? Am I, I've lost Judas. I've lost the eight. Now I've lost the three. What am I doing? He prays the second time. Maybe, maybe they're not asleep this time. He gets up and he goes back and they're asleep again. Oh my God. Oh my God. Don't you know the ones that betray me? It's a hand right here. I'm about to be sold in the hands of sinners. I'm going to be killed. They're going to strip me. They're going to cut my flesh like ribbons. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. It reminds me of the church. We're not sensitive no more to understand when people are going through things. We rather run. We rather worry about our own feelings than the feelings of that other person. So what? You're facing the God of the Lord. Who cares? We got our own things we're going through. Jesus, for that third time, enters into that garden. And the Bible says that he goes into agony. So much agony that his sweat becomes as great drops of blood fall into the ground. The blood around, or the ground around him is soaked in blood and sweat. His body weakened now because of prayer. His body weakened because of the pressure that the enemy is putting on him. He couldn't give up. Who's going to stop him? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a great 
great revelation. Nobody has the power to keep you keeping on but the God that lives in you. I am learning. I am learning the older I get that people just leave you. With their own agendas. Their own, what they want to do. They could care less and sometimes they don't even recognize the pressure they're under. I'm not preaching to anybody. Therefore, the gift of discernment of spirits are not evident in the church like they should be. They're not working like they should be because if you have a discernment of spirit, you would know it's not time to run. Stay with me. He got up. His sweat is clung to his, his hair is clung to his face. Blood is covered now. The garments that was was soaked with stain or was soaked with sweat is now soaked in blood. And life is in the blood. And his body's losing life. So he's dying from the garden experience. He's not waiting to get to Calvary to die. He ain't waiting till they nail him to a cross to die. He's dying in the garden all along with nobody laughing. Nobody. Nobody. He gets up. He walks back. I'm not even close to being done with y'all with me. He walks back to those men. Get up. Get up, Peter. I, I almost believe that he was unrecognizable in this day. When the Bible said, I would say a prophesied about Jesus and said his visage, visage was so marred that he was unrecognizable. I don't think that happened at Pilate's judgment hall. Neither do I think it happened in the judgment house of Caiaphas or the prison house of Caiaphas. Neither do I think it happened at the whipping post. Neither do I think it happened at the bruising of the slaps of the cheek or the plucking of the beard. No, no. I think it happened in the garden. I think he was under so much pressure and just about to explode that it marred his vision. Listen to me. I think he became to look like that first Adam that was the sin nature. He became sin for us. Notice this. He was handed a cup. Father, if this cup passed from me, could you hear him pray that in agony? If this cup passed from me, let it pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but my will be done. Whatever you're going to do to me, whatever you're going to allow to happen to me, whatever you're going to let me go through, just get it over with. <coughs> How many sleepless nights? How many times of feeling if one more thing happens, I'm not going to be able to handle it. If one more own selfish failure happens in my life, I'm not going to be able to stand. I've, I've experienced the garden. He stands. So bitch is barred. So messed up, so humanistically changed, that he gets back to those men and wake up. Wake up, listen to me. They're coming. I hear them. Now he had preached, listen to me, he had preached in their synagogues. He had been around all of those men. They knew who he was. But by the time those soldiers came, they didn't recognize him. Read it. Judas said it'll be the one I kiss. They'd seen him a hundred times before that. But when they got to the garden, 
He was so changed because of that cup. Because of that indifference, because of that trouble, because of that disturbance that was going on in his soul, he was so changed that they didn't even know the one that had preached him. Judas shut up. Actually, if you read the story correctly, Jesus asked him, Who are you seeking? And here's the reply Jesus of Nazareth. They didn't even know who he was. When Jesus said, I am he, Judas kissed him. That kiss of betrayal, I felt that kiss. I know what it's like. <coughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, but I love you, but I'd rather just not even say I love you. Just stick the knife. Do I have two minutes now? 
homes. The only one. Nobody, nobody goes to the house of Caiaphas with him. Not one of those men stands at the whipping post with him. None of them are around when they pluck the beard from his face. Nobody is going through the beat. Nobody stepped up and said, I'll take the beat for him. Nobody even bowed down beside of him and said, if you're going to whip him, whip me. We need in this church to have a determination that we look at the enemy and say, if you're going to put that person through hell, I'm going through hell with him. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to back up. I'm going to stand with him through that. That's what builds a church. You want program to start one. Don't argue and gripe and complain and whine because the church ain't got it already. Help it. Start it. Uh, everything. So he, he goes through the alone. Can you imagine 600 soldiers spitting in your face? They didn't get spit on. Nobody in this church gets spit on. But me. Something goes wrong in the church, it's Joey's fault. If there's a rumor spread, it's a rumor spread on Joey. If there's a failure in this church, guess who failed? Me. That'd be the story told. Nobody stuck with Jesus. Nobody cared. Nobody, nobody was tied to that open post. And took those lashes. Nobody was along with him. When they shackled him in Caiaphas' prison house. And history says they stuck his feet in acid. To pull the flesh on his bones. So that when he walked the Via Della Rosa that early that next morning. Every step would be so painful. You know what that was? It was the devil trying to stop Calvary from happening. <coughs> Nobody. After being beaten, after being ridiculed, after being spit upon, after the, the beard plucking, after the crown of thorns smashed down into his skull, he has to carry his cross. Nobody's got a hold of it. None of these guys that followed him for three years, none of them that he empowered by the Holy Ghost, none of them that worked miracles, none of them that got anybody saved, none of them was okay. Because they have the attitude of the church. If it ain't my cup, I'm not drinking it. You can drink it. But let me remind you, the cup Jesus drank in that garden wasn't his. It was ours. He had not sinned. It was our trouble. It was our indifference. It was our pain. It was our hurt. And he bore it in his own body. He rises this and this. They load him with the cross. And nobody walked up to the devil rose with him. Not any of his followers. He lost them all. They crucify him. And John happens to scurry his mama. Jesus and Mama Mary right up on the hill of Calvary and says, you want to watch you die there. But as soon as Jesus' eyes locked with her, he said, woman, behold your son, son, behold your mother. The Bible said John took Jesus, took, or John took Jesus' mother and turned around and walked off Calvary and took care of Mary till the day she died. That's what the scripture says. Not a disciple of that. Nobody he done miracles for. Isn't it strange that all the miracles God's done in this church, so somehow we can forget what he did for us when it's his cup, when it's his time to die. They nailed him to a cross. You didn't drive the nails, did you, Mike? James, you didn't drive the nails, did you? John, you wasn't there to, 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 to pierce his hands and feet, weren't you? No, 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 you wasn't. 
You, you, you didn't drive the crown of thorns, right? So you're okay. Did anybody in here smack him? Did anybody spit in his face? Did anybody pluck the beard? Anybody in this Redemption Harvest Church do that? No! No, we wasn't there. But I wonder if the Bible's right when it says, and they crucified Christ afresh, and they put him to an open shame. What you do unto the least of these, my brethren, you do also unto me. When we read people in their garden experience, when we don't care anymore, when we're not faithful to help pray them through, when we're more concerned about getting our sleep and what makes our flesh feel good than what they're going through, we crucify him afresh and put him to an open shame. We didn't, I didn't drive the nails. Not in his cross. But I can look back on my life and I've drove him in other people's crosses. I, I, didn't, I didn't smack him. I wasn't there. But I've smacked others. I wasn't kind when I should have been. I didn't help them through. I picked and choose who I like and who I don't like. It's flesh. Am I making any sense tonight? Yeah. Here's the problem. None of us think of anybody else's cup of trouble until it comes our time <laughs> to have a cup of trouble. When it comes our time to drink, we drink like it. Why am I alone? Don't nobody know I'm about burnt out? Does anybody not know I'm ready to throw in the towel? You don't know. You don't know. Because you're not taking time to go to the garden with him. With each other. financial problems. I know. I'm saying I got financial problems. And all I care about is me. Because my house pays me. My life bill's not due. As long as I'm driving a real nice car, my car pays its me. That's all I care. Oh yeah, I'm part of the church. But that's their debt. People that's going through that stuff, that struggle and that trouble, let them figure it out themselves. But I'm part of the church. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow the Lord if it makes every deacon in this church mad and they're with me afterwards. I'm doing an offering tonight for a needy family. They're in the garden experience. They're in the garden experience. You ain't never been to their garden. You don't know what it's like. And sometimes because we can't sympathize with people, it's because we've never been to their garden. And I'm not one of those that tell what I'm giving because I think when you tell what you're giving, you got your reward. Right, right, right. But I'm going to give a pretty good size offering tonight. And I'm going to start this offering off because I don't want them walking through this garden experience by themselves. 
I want them to know at the end of the night, there's people in this garden with me. They're not asleep. They're not slumbering. They're recognizing that the gift of discernment needs to happen in the church, and they are with me. What are you going to do? I was so pleased with some of the ladies in our church. While Brenda's dad was in the hospital dying, some of the ladies, I didn't even know this until after it was over, some of the ladies got together and went and cleaned Brenda's house and hung her Christmas decorations because she hadn't had time to do it. You said, preacher, that's a small thing. No, 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 no. It's a thing to let the sister Brenda know we're in this garden with you. I'm trying to wake us up. Wake up! If we're going to have the church God wants us to have, you got to wake up! We can talk about prophesy all we want to about miracles going to take place. It starts with love. It starts with love. I, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't even know if you care if somebody's in the garden of experience. But if I was you, if I had a daughter, would you like it? Because who knows? You may not be, you, you may think that's foolishness and that's crazy and then people ought to get out of that garden. You may be glad Jesus didn't walk out of that garden without fulfilling his father's will. And you better understand that next week, next month, it can be you. I'm going to tell you something about the garden experience. You are never going to make it to your destiny without a garden experience. It's not if that will happen, it's when it will happen. I don't know. I, I didn't preach where y'all would shout tonight. I was hoping maybe I'd turn this thing and just, but I feel like with all my heart I preached everything God gave me. Amen. You want to help somebody get out of the garden tonight? Maybe. You get out of the garden one step at a time. Just a little longer. One step at a time. One step at a time. Are you talking to the dean? Please. You know what Jeremiah, the great, one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament did? He prophesied and preached, done all he did. And then he came to his garden experience. And he said, I preached to a nation. He was telling God, I preached to a nation and told them, Thus saith the Lord, and then you did not do what you said you were going to do. So I won't mention your name again. I'm not going to make myself look like a fool when you don't do it the way I think you should. So I quit. He ends up in a pit. They tie rotten rags. Days and weeks go by. He's in this miry pit up to his armpits. You know what it was? It was human waste. The waste of the city ran off into this pit. He was in a septic tank. A 
seven hungry. Worms eating into his flesh. I'm not with you to again. We hear a lot. But then the, he heard the word of the Lord and he said, It feels like a fire. He shut it in my bones. I can't withhold what you put in me. Our Apostle Paul, our Apostle to the Gentiles, after all the miracles and after all the great revelations of what he had saw in his life, comes to a place where he writes to the church, the church of Corinth and says, I was with you, even in my weakness. But you weren't with me. He went on to say, how dare any of you for me to empty up myself and receive nothing back from you. He wasn't talking about money. He was talking about support. He said, I didn't stop when things got rough. I didn't give up when I felt like giving in. I didn't walk off from you. Because I thought there was something better down the road. I stayed. I stayed in my own weakness. But my body was frail. When I was hurting. When I didn't feel like preaching. I came anyway. He goes on to say, even in my failures. I stayed. Why did Paul stay? Because he knew that church of Corinth was about to go through a garden experience where everything about them would be shaken. I don't know what Susan got. Let's get around these altars tonight and pray for people that are in a garden experience. Can we do that?
listen to me. I'm rebuking every devil. <laughs> I said, I'm rebuking every devil that's trying to get in this service tonight and trying to hinder what God's doing. We have not because we ask not. Michael, lay hands on her right now. Just lay your hand right on her forehead. In the name of Jesus. I pray for healing now. Come on, church. We can do better than this. Come on. In the name of the Lord. Heal in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Church. 
And uh, I understand they've got some kids and stuff, and some uh, grown kids. And so let's uh, be a part of that on Tuesday. And then Brenda's dad, you, you can come uh, you? 